You're watching RVT Rashid's Teletube, serving nations worldwide. You're watching RVT, Rashid's Teletube Worldwide. Where is Rashid all the time? Up next on RVT, Rashid's Video Tube. Just in time for Shison, it's RVT's Rashid Water Warfare Show. As the Shison season heats up, stay cool and comfortable here on RVT, where it's Rashid all the time. RVT want to wish you a very happy shyston season. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Are you ashamed to be on public assistance? Many are. And if you're one of them, take note. There's no reason to be ashamed. Public assistance is there for us. So the next time you may feel ashamed, remember, there's no pride in substantial living. Because we all count. I'm Rashid, and it's an honor to bring this to you. Gosh, you're watching RVT, Rashid's video tool, serving nations of the Serving nations on uh, worldwide. Oh. <laughs> What's cooking? Hot dog. Just an hot dog. Delicious wiener. On a bun. Delicious then, delicious now. A hot dog is high in potassium and rich in vitamin B, 13%, and they taste great. Did you know a hot dog is a sausage? In definition, a hot dog is a fully cooked sausage grilled and served in a bun as a sandwich. Plump and juicy, how can you resist? Not that expensive and promising. Think back to childhood with hot dogs and baked babies and how the smell got you aroused with mouth water. An American ball game eatery tradition. It's no wonder why the all-American hot dog is still one of the number one best pastime snacks. Rather pork, beef, or chicken is guaranteed to satisfy. So go out and have a wiener. Look for money saving coupons and papers in news ads. You're watching RBT, home of Rashid's Universe. I like how you say, a he gentleman, like that. Very interesting. Who <laughs> really know how to hook a motherfucker up? We are RVT, Rashid's video too. Serving nations worldwide.
Oh, I feel so terrible. What's the matter, guy? Oh, you wouldn't understand. Oh, come on. It can't be all that bad. Okay, if I must, Rashid, I'll tell it to you. I have no sweets this year. You have no sweets? Well, that's not good. No, it's not good at all. I want something sugary. I want something delicious. Here, side dear. Try some chocolate bites. Chocolate bites? Yup, chocolate bites. Tiny chocolate bits wrapped up. After dinner or evening leisure. They're great. Hmm, chocolate bites. Hey, guy. Yeah? Are you feeling any better? Long as I got my chocolate bites. I know, I know. So, guys, when you're out, pick some up. It's great. Hello, and this is Father Rashid. And knowing that this is the season for nothing but pure love and giving, I want to wish you a very happy Shaisa. This is not church. This is not my cult. But what this is, is spiritual talk. Now, we're on RVT, and welcome to RVT, everybody. I try to keep us entertained as much as I can. Y'all know that. My true sheik of tears knows that. Anyway. And inside of our entertainment, I think it's important, very important, that we get adapted to spiritualness. Now, for those of y'all, for those of you who, <coughs> who, <coughs> who, um, uh, who not interested in this part of RVT, then you can excuse yourself. But around here, I think it's important that we talk about spiritualness from time to time because without that, a man is not whole. You see, a real man will realize he's, he needs spiritualness in his life. A real man, as well as a real woman. You can't go through life without spiritualness. You can, but you'll be more animalistic. You'll give in to human urges. You'll develop habits that is unhealthy. A wise one wants balance in his life. You are playing with fire, living without it. Because tomorrow, not only is it promised to you, but when it does come, it's going to come with or without you. So we're talking about, it's the next second promise to you. The way of righteousness, no matter what God you're serving. No matter what God you're serving. 
the way to that God is very difficult. And if you want to serve a God, you will be persecuted. The Bible speaks of that when it clearly says that he that even desires to live with Christ in union with God will be persecuted. So even if you desire it, you will be persecuted. Knowing this, you should know, you should expect hard times on your road of serving your God. You should expect it. It's almost like <coughs> if you was having a dinner and you invited some people over for dinner, you will get ready and prepare. So when they went shop, once they go there and you eat, you can entertain your host in a way they should be entertained. When they when they're in your domain, when they're in your domain, so you want to prepare for that dinner. Likewise, when you're following Christ, when you want to do the right thing, prepare for suffering. Now, how do you prepare for suffering? One of the chief ways to prepare to suffer is gaining your relationship with God, making sure that's strong. See. No matter what happens to the Bible, which it could get burnt in a fire, or a church could get burnt down also. Your relationship with God, nobody can take that away. You see, nobody can take that away. Loving your neighbor with everything you got wholeheartedly is the chief rule of being a Christian. That's the identification mark, like a thumbprint, is love. By this, Jesus said, all will know that you are my child, that you are a true follower of Christ. Letting love be the identifying mark of a true Christian. With that said, you can clearly identify the bad fruit from the good fruit. But the bad fruit tastes so good, doesn't it? Mouth watering. Mouth watering. But in the end, is it worth it? See, what you got to realize is that we don't know why we have this ability. Why we have, why we want to do wrong. We don't, I mean... We understand what bad is, of course. And of course, we inherit it from Adam when he disobeyed God along with Eve. So we inherit it. But we don't know why we like to do it. See, that tree of knowledge, it was a reason for that tree. Or God, Jehovah, wouldn't have put it there. Think about it. Everything he does, even when testing us out, is for a reason. So when he had the tree down there of knowledge of good and bad, there's no telling what that tree was going to be used for. We know he put it there to test Adam and Eve. We already know that. But surely the tree must mean something. Now we was going to have a world full of peaceful, perfect people. There's no telling who he was going to say, go over there and eat from that tree. Just one person. And let that one person become like us on a world full of perfect people. See, that's a design. Maybe it's something in it. After all, we're not all bad, are we? Think about it. In our heads, we're bad because we inherited sin from Adam. So we're bad people. Right now, are you bad? See, the Bible never goes into detail of when mankind gets bad from the sin Adam did. What kind of bad that is. Can we all be bad now? What about the doctors and officers who's making these vaccines for diseases? These doctors inherit the sin from Adam, so we're all bad, correct? Then are we bad right now? Are people generally bad? Is the big question. See, that's been pounding on our heads so much that we're bad, we're bad, we're bad, we're going to die from the Bible. That's all I say. We're going to die, we're bad. That's not. That's not what the Bible says. 
The Bible doesn't say we're bad. We inherited sin, which is bad. It's a difference. If you look at your faith in a, in a different way, maybe you can get more out of it. Because see, one thing man likes to do is take over everything. Man likes to dominate everything. And if you really look at your faith, you'll see man has dominated that to the core. So instead of thinking spiritual thoughts, we think it man-made spiritual thoughts. That's not in the Bible. These come in all fashions, forms, and shapes. And basically is geared towards breaking down our spirituality towards the Lord. We have to realize what's right and wrong. And if we need help, rely on Jesus' sacrifice to get us through those tough times. That's what we have to realize. But man says, uh-uh, it don't work that way. If you sin and you keep sinning, God don't like you. Jehovah's Holy Spirit ain't with you, you keep sinning. See, that's man's thinking. See, our partners, the people we sit with, the people we lay with, the people we, we <coughs> go to work with, <coughs> these people are going to be geared towards breaking down our spirituality. So they'll come off with things going against what you know from the scriptures. You may sin a thousand times upon more, but God is right there to forgive you. That's what Jesus sacrifices for. So we can have that relationship with God. And then when we make mistakes, it can be forgiven through his blood. That's the whole purpose of it. It's not that you keep sinning over and over and over again. You're no good. That doesn't make any sense. What the sacrifice was for if you can't keep sinning over and over again. You see the point? So it's important to realize if you got some kind of animosity. Or some kind of personal vendetta against religion. Slow down a bit and pay attention to yourself. Is it because of other people? Or is it because of God himself did something to you? Maybe you lost a loved one. Maybe you got betrayed somehow. For everything you went through, the Bible has the answer for it if you just listen to it. If not the Bible, the Quran, or whatever book it is you're studying, that book has the answer to it. But you have to want the help that's provided. See, you got to work, and it's hard. It's very hard. Like we said, though, if you desire to be in union with Christ, you're going to be persecuted. If you desire it. So you have to realize this and prepare. How do we prepare? By having a strong relationship with the Lord. And by doing this, no matter what happens, I don't know. You go, you go be the kind of Christian that, read, that reads pathless all the time. But what about your prayer to the Lord? What about when you talk to God? What about that? See, if you strengthen that, then what if something happened and you lose your Bible in a fire? Or you, you, or you lose your pathless in the accident? What you going to do? If your relationship was strong with God, see, Jehovah will show you what to do. He won't leave your side. You know why? Because the Bible says so. Take notice of him in all your ways, and he himself will make your path straight. That means in all your ways, take notice of the Lord. And your paths will be straight by him. But you got to believe this. If you don't believe it, then you'll start sinking in the water like Peter. You see? See, Jesus was standing on the water. Once he started to doubt, he started sinking, you see. He started sinking. See, once he started to doubt. That's an example of right now. See, you got to you got to really believe that God gives a fuck about you. You have to really believe it. And why it's so hard to believe that God cares for us? Because we're adapting man's opinions about things. For instance, we can go to work or we can have a family. We're raising our family, but we know we want to do more, but we can't. We doing what we can do. How do we know we did a good job? 
Now, you guys dress yourself every morning. You put on your socks, you put on your shoes, you comb your hair, you, you do whatever. But how do you know you did a good job? How do you know? Because you yourself know. Because you, you, when you brush your teeth. How do you know you did a good job brushing your teeth or what? Because you. Okay. Now, look at your spiritual wallet. It will be the same way. Do you go home and get mad because you put on a shirt? Or mad because you put on a pair of socks? Or mad because you did your hair a certain way? Do you get upset and like your life is over? Of course not. Likewise, with spirituality, it's the same way. It should be the same way. See, man wants you to look at that Bible or that Quran the way he wants you to look at it. But what does the Bible, what does it say inside that? What does it say? See, you may get upset over these little things that have nothing to do with the Bible, but it has something to do with what man told or tell about the Bible. So you'll be sitting next to somebody at work or whatever, and they'll say, Yeah, I believe in God or whatever, but... Uh, you know, I got. You know, I just want to live my life and and, and, and you know and what have you. Whatever. And they go about their business. Now you get up, go about your day, but what they say is still on your head because naturally we're gonna look on the over 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 the other fence and see if it's nicer over there. And usually, nine times out of ten, it is nicer over there. It is. It's very nice over there. So it's easy for us to fall prelude to the fact we're not a good Christian. See, we're not a good Christian because you're not paying attention that you didn't win that person over. See, you will know you're a good Christian if you tell somebody to tell somebody about the scriptures and that person you tell stop whatever they're doing right there and follow you and learn more about this religion you know. That's how you know you're a good Christian, right? See, we go by what we know, what we see, what we know, what we see. But pay attention to what the scriptures say also. Just as much as you knowing that. You know you do a good job when you study the Bible. You know you do a good job when you try to pray to God. You know it. So why are you upset that you don't know it because of man? Now remember, you know you did a good job brushing your teeth, putting on a shirt, putting on, you know you did this. So you ain't gonna get mad at that. So when you're studying or learning the Lord, see, you know. So why, or why do you have bad feelings towards what you were studying? Answer me that question. Let's go through this again. You know you. You don't do a bad job brushing your teeth or washing up. You know you did a good job of whatever you do. Getting dressed. Wiping your ass. You know. Alright, so if you was once studying the Bible. Or you was once in religion. Why are you upset or don't attend anymore? If you know. How is it going to. See, it don't make sense. How is it going to be this way with putting on your clothes, you know. Or brushing your teeth. You know you did a good job of doing that. But when it comes to serving God, all is all as you made a mistake shit. Where did it come from? What, what happened there? What happened? Did you know it's the same exact thing? It's, ex it's the same exact thing. 99.99% of our problems from religion come from other people. You may say, because I don't like what the Bible says. It's because, it's because of another person. Because see, in your head, somebody wrote their Bible. And apostles did write the Bible. They did. So another person going to be right there. No matter what it is. It's always because another person that you don't like religion. Now, listen to this. Just listen to this. What if. What if the Lord himself spoke to you. Allah spoke to you, Muhammad, Jehovah, whoever you serve, whoever you believe in. What if they actually spoke to you? 
without the Bible, without the songbook, without no preachers, no nothing spoke to you. It's it. Can you do that for me? Would your life be turned around or not? Okay, likewise. It doesn't make no sense that in the scriptures you made a mistake. When you brush your teeth, you call me here, you know you do a good job with that. But over here when you do, it's like you end it all. Create. See, you're going against something is right there. See, if God spoke to you himself, you won't need no Bible. You say, okay, I know 100%. See, now it's like you brushing your teeth, serving the Lord. It's like you putting on your clothes, serving the Lord. See, that's what it's like now because you spoke to God one-on-one. -on -one. But since we got the Bible here, and you know, when you think about the reason why you don't believe in the Quran or whatever you believe in, it's always other people involved in it. It's never what you, or else, hey, God, you putting yourself down. If you know how you felt about the book, if you know what it said, whatever, you, you stop because your prayers weren't answered. You stop because your child got killed. You stop because your mother died. Whatever. Whatever. What do you know about that book? What do you know you should be doing without that book? You mean to tell me if they take away all the Bibles, all the Bible literature, and all the churches or kingdom halls or whatever, you'll still be a Christian? That's what you're telling me? What what will happen when you got nothing to read? Then what would you do? Sit and meditate, maybe? Perhaps call upon your brain some scriptures you But what if there were no Bible, no churches, no halls, no literature, no nothing of spirituality whatsoever? Can you still be a Christian? And if so, what will you be doing to be a Christian? Praying? If you asked Rashid that a while ago, I would have said it didn't matter. Because, see, I know my God. I talk to him all the time. Me and him buddies. Me and him buddies, chums. And I ain't worried about nothing. Because he all you going to do is put me in a It's his shit. All you going to do is put me in the right place. That's what I would say. See, you have to remember that your relationship with the Lord goes upon above anything that you got upset about what you read, what you heard, people sitting beside you, what you experienced. The Lord is greater than anything. So before you read anything, console him in prayer. Talk to him like a friend and just see what happens. You see, we got to see we, we we we're mixed up in a world full of materialism and literature so much that we believe this literature more than the product itself, which is God and Jesus. You see, the literature say we got to do this, we can't do this, we can't do this, we got to do this. Pray to God, we got to do this. Read the scripture here, read the scripture here, read the scripture here. Now you sit, read the scripture. You When you get home, you do you do what it says. You sit, got to do this. You do everything it says in your house. Everything. Then when you finish, you close the book, put it away and say, ah, that felt good. I'm a Christian now. I'm, I feel really good. Now you go about your business, go to sleep, wake up the next morning. Before you eat, you pray. Thank you so much because I'm about to eat. Thank you so much. Then you put your head up and eat and that's it. Is that what the Bible say? Is that, is that what the Bible says? Does God, did God say serve him that way? If I'm not mistaken, the Bible says... Trust in God with all your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding. In all. If I say, see, one thing about the scriptures, you got to look at words. They're there for a reason. Rather, it's in a book of Quran. These words here for a reason. So, if I say I want all of these pennies on the table, am I going to take some? Am I going to take all but leave a quarter of the pennies there half of the pennies there no all means all so the scripture says in all your ways take notice of him and he himself will make your path straight now that's what the scriptures say 
And then say some of your ways take notice of the Lord. And they say uh, AM only pay attention to the Lord. No, PM only pay attention to the Lord. Afternoon, no morning, noon, and night. It doesn't say none of that. It says in all your ways take notice of him. And only then he himself will make your path straight. So you got to read the scriptures and apply it in your life. You can't just read this Bible, this, and this Bible literature here, and this over here and say, hey, I'm serving God. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You want to have a relationship with the Lord before anything. Just in case anything happened, you could go in prayer and go, God, you know me. Jesus, you know me. Allah, you know me. We talk all the time. You see what's going on. I need your help here. Now, you mean to tell me if there's not a God, they would, you wouldn't get help? You can't focus on man-made material propaganda and say, I'm a Christian. Because you get these people on TV to do all the talking. These people on the radio do all the talking. But it's not about that. Those are shows. Those are events. The thing is your relationship with the Lord. That comes first. Then comes all these other shows. And you can say, oh, they just my father's shows. You see. They're just Allah's shows. You know, preachers, Bible stories. These are things that help you get strong while you're serving the Lord. But it's not serving the Lord. Serving the Lord is learning His will, then doing the will. Not everybody, the Bible says, not everybody that screams out, Lord, and Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But He doing, doing the will of my Father will. See, you can't sit back and go, oh, I'm saved, so I'm all right. Oh, I'm baptized. I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I'm baptized, so I'm okay. Oh, I'm okay because that's not what the book says. See, now you're contradicting so if something happened from contradicting thing, if something happened, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Because see, like what we talked about, see, you know how you approach the Bible. You know how you approach God's word. See, Jehovah is the examiner of hearts. It says in the scriptures, he's searching kidneys, lungs, everywhere inside you for any love of him. And once he finds it, he can work with that. See, you know. If it's all on you. I branched too far off from the tree. So I can't get back. So I was gone. So the, but the point I'm trying to make is literature is not enough and it's not serving the Lord. This good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the heaven of earth earth for witness to all the nations. Then the end will come. I'm a Sadiq. Okay, I own my own cult. What we believe is that this is Bible prophecy being fulfilled now. That's what we believe. We believe that right now is starting Armageddon starting now. This is the Great Tribulation starting now. That's what we believe. And I'll tell you why. I'm without any going into detail because I know y'all fragile and if I and you get frightened. You do. So, but take what I just said, and this good news will be preached in all the heaven of the earth for witness to all the nations. Then the end will come. So, when I was in Jehovah's Witness, that was the main thing. When is the end? When is the end? When is the end? End, 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 end. And because that's all they talk about, that's all this God's kingdom. So, that's all we used to talk about. So that's one of the scriptures that we stuck to. This good news will be preached. And so this good news about Jehovah's kingdom has to be preached worldwide. Then after that, the end will come. So we was like, well, there's certain areas on the planet Earth that didn't hear the word of God. So that's what we were saying. So we kept working. During the preacher, when they come knock on your door. Okay, they was doing a preacher work. And this good news we preached and all. So we're waiting for it to be worldwide. Then the end will come. Well, that's off to us. That prophecy is over. Because ever since the internet hit, the internet is what? 
worldwide. So now if somebody wants to know about Jehovah's Witness, they don't need to go to Jehovah's Witness no more. They can look at it right online. Everybody practically heard of their name before and picked up a literature so they could go right online. They don't need to talk to Jehovah's Witness. So it's Jesus Christ sent his disciples out to make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them, teaching them. And that's gone. And that's the main thing Jesus said before he left. His first coming on earth when he left. He said go make disciples of people of all the nations. Baptizing them. Teaching them in the name of the Father Holy Spirit. Then Jesus left. Alright. What happened now? It's, see it changed now. Because now people can learn about you. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, said apostles to do it. Correct. He ain't say they're going to be learning on no machine, but yet we're at an age now where the good news of the kingdom is worldwide now. That's why we believe that, that's one of the reasons why we believe that this is the start of Armageddon, it's starting right now. This is the start of the great tribulation. And that goes with the men in the, men in the last days will be haughty, self-assuming, disobedience to parents, unthankful, disloyal, all these things. People not acting like that no more. They are still mean. Don't get me wrong. They are still mean. But their mind is on other things now. It's not just that selfishness the way it always was been. It's changed. Everybody's anger is geared towards a certain problem now. So, so we just see things in a different way than the average Christian sees things. They're still waiting. We're not waiting anymore. We're now enjoying. But that's another story. I'll pray maybe I'll talk talk about it later on when I do another spiritual talk. But anyway, I just wanted to come on the air right now and let us hear something spiritual so we can keep moving forward in the right direction. And there'll be other shows of spiritual talk coming up in the near future. This is Father Rashid. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a very pleasant blessed evening. This program was brought to you by Rashid's Cyber Rock Films in conjunction with YouTube and Google Plus and social media plug out. It's all about change, real change. Peace. Up next on RVT, Rashid's Video Tube. Just in time for Shison, it's RVT's Rashid's Water Warfare Show. As the Shison season heats up, stay cool and comfortable here on RVT, where it's Rashid all the time. Hello, and this is Father Rashid. And knowing that this is the season for nothing but pure love and giving, I want to wish you a very happy Shaisa. You're watching RVT, Rashid's Teletoon Worldwide. Where is Rashid all the time?
Welcome to a new form of radio, RMJC. Machine's Music Jukebox Center. Play all the greatest bits of yesteryear. Hey, hey, guys! 80s, 90s, now. And fun. media thanks to YouTube and Google Club hmm, let me try to remember here Rashi YouTube radio show and Google Plus our man. Wow! <laughs> Yo, watching RVT, Rashid's Teletoon, serving nations worldwide. You're watching Rashi's RVT. Wishing you the very best this shison season here on RVT. Where's Rashi? all of the time.
Rest, rest, play. Remember, any physical activity requires hours of rest, so be sure and get yours. Or if you need help with sleeping problems, just go to www.needhelptosleep.org. That's www.needhelptosleep.org. What's up, everybody? Come take a walk with me. Yeah, yeah, I've been walking these streets for a long time. And I'm still not tired of it. In fact, I kind of like it. I'm searching for a place. And if it wasn't for my master... Father! Father. Okay, father. Anyway, if it wasn't for my father, I would have no home. Let me introduce myself to you. My name is Fox, and I'm looking for a place to stay, as I was saying. And uh, I found an area with my father, and I'm going to like it here. That's right. You're going to love it here, Rashid. At the movies, coming soon to RVT. Don't miss out. I'll be looking for you guys. Don't stray away too far. It's RVT. Rashid's at the movies will be starting soon. You guys are watching RVT, Rashid's video team. It's Liquidation's Blowout at Factory Free! Authentic finishes incorporated. Custom screen printing special. Come in and get comfortable and take advantage of warehouse sales 80% off or well, some dealers. So come in, they're waiting to help and greet you. Come where you can say you can take advantage of everything. Gift ideas, shoe ideas, and much, much more. All at the factory free. Take the warehouse sale for up to 70% off. That's right, 70% off! That's what the food coupons where you can save that the kids will love. That's the premium retail group, mega warehouse sale, 60 to 90% off. All more offers, 30, 20, 50, 40% off. Save, save, save. That's customary items or closeout. It's worth the wait. All fire on Friday and Sunday, coat and remedy, you can't go wrong. 30% off, 20% off, and $25 for Costner. In some dealers, commercial moving and offers relocation may apply. Brought to you by RVT, so take advantage and save. Plush toys for the toddlers. Buy one, get one free for one dollar. Just buy one, get one free for one dollar. Hey, that picture looks familiar there. No offense, boss, but we had to show him! Uh, honey, could you come in for a second? Going! 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 Gone! Check www.svn-bid2win.com That's www.svn-bid2win.com Check out the Capital Options Warehouse Sale also! Hi, this is Rashid, President and CEO of RVT. Come in and save. Check for warehouse prices for great savings. You'll be glad you did. That's right! And with warehouse storage, you can't go wrong! So come in and save at Factory Warehouse Sales and Rajin approves at Factory Free! Nobody loves me. Everybody don't like me. But I don't care because I love this girl. Da -da. And she Life is very colorful. 
Life can have many colors and designs and things to make you feel good from the inside out. Uh, this needs us to say that uh, confusion also enters the picture. But we have a, a, a helper here that can get us through these difficult times. Uh, you just have to have an open mind and a reasonable opinion about situations. Now, I have something here that might interest uh, uh, certain individuals that's going through a very, very tough time. Uh, I have some, what we call, ice cream. And, 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 and this ice cream of uh, 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 Rashid is very... Uh, uh, Rashid, could you come here for one second, please? Uh, here, taste some of this ice cream. Ah, now we're getting uh, the, the plot thickens, and we're getting to uh, a measure of cooperation and, and and dignity and and loyalty, and 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 ice cream is what did it. So the next time you're out and about, pick up some ice cream. Why not? It will lighten your mood. It will lighten your mood and attitude. Yes, it will. And guys, thanks for your support. You're watching RVT Rashid's Teletube, serving nations worldwide. You're watching RVT, Rashid's Teletube Worldwide. Where is Rashid all the time? You're watching Rashid's RVT. Up next on RVT, Rashid's video tube. Just in time for Shison, it's RVT's Rashid Water Warfare Show. As the Shison season heats up, stay cool and comfortable here on RVT, where it's Rashid all the time.